Uh, welcome back. I'm still talking to political and social commentator James Melville. Uh, James, we're into day two of the junior doctors' strike. Uh, they're looking for a 35% pay rise. Uh, Health Secretary Steve Barclay says, I'm not getting round the table with you until you uh, be more realistic about what you possibly might end up getting. I mean, why not just get round the table with them and t tell them that face to face and say, look, you know you're not getting 35%. You know you're going to end up with what the nurses did around about 10%. Let's get real. Why do we have to have this sort of ritual standoff about, you know, I'm tougher than you. We want 35%. They know they're not getting it. Uh, Steve Bartley said we haven't got any money. He'll find money just like he found money for the nurses and the ambulance strikes. While this nonsense unfolds before our very eyes, this ritual dance, patients are dying. Yeah, they're buying money. You know, the taxpayer for MPs pay rises above inflation, also MPs expenses. Um, but I agree in terms of the negotiation, it's the wrong way around. Yeah, we get the fact in a negotiation, you always come in with an overinflated um, approach to negotiation and you come back from that a little bit. But the other aspect of negotiation is you actually meet and you get around the table and you start from there and you put your cards on the table and you start negotiating from there. For this sort of optics, and we're not even going to chat. It's like something out of The Apprentice. You know, it's just, it's, it's, it's pathetic. Meanwhile, more importantly, our waiting lists are going up, which will be stretched even more, and certain departments and facilities will be stretched again to the point of not working over the strike period. Um, and we've gone off the back of three years of waiting lists going up because of the backlog treatments from, from the COVID response and the prioritization of the COVID treatment. And now we have this. The service is breaking as it is. I've got living experience of this over the last five weeks. Of course you have, yeah, you with your dad, yeah? Yeah, I've, se I've seen it. The staff are amazing, but the facilities, it's not there. And there's, you know, there's a huge issue with the, the care supply at the end. But with this, it's putting more strain. And the government, what they should be saying is, right, we're going to get around the table here. And it's, whatever it takes, we're going to resolve this. This is not just something that's come out of the blue. There's been rumblings about this for about a year. Yet again, it's the government not getting on top of the issue, and suddenly there's a bigger problem. And the statements, the sort of tough man statements saying, oh, we're not going to negotiate with you, this is too high, we're not going to get around the table. It's ridiculous. Meanwhile, because of this inaction, people's lives are being put at risk. Wasn't the government, they once said, they used that mantra over and over again, protect the NHS. It's yeah. not just about protecting the NHS, it's about protecting us but protecting the people, protecting patients. And at the moment, that is not happening. It's actually putting people's lives at risk. Yeah, these NHS doctors are not protecting the NHS and they're not protecting patients. It's incredibly disingenuous when they say, oh, we've put in place a system whereby patients will uh, be properly treated, their safety will be ensured. That's not true. That is not true. There is no doubt whatsoever that just as the nurses strikes causes cause deaths and the ambulance drivers strike caused deaths, the junior doctors strike will cause deaths and probably more deaths. Uh, they have timed this four day strike to come directly after the Easter bank holiday uh, when this is a critical period. Uh, this is really hard line stuff. Uh, putting patients' lives at risk on the altar of an industrial action by a left-wing trade union that should be called the National Union of Doctors, the NUD, instead of its pompous name, the British Medical Association. It's just a left-wing union. Yeah, I mean, the, the bottom line is about people's lives. We were told that repeatedly over the pandemic, and yet you've now got... A series of things with the NHS in terms of you know lack of funding facilities, um, now got strike action. And if you look at things like excess deaths, even over the last year, there's a number of reasons for that. But the main reason is because of delays, treatment delays, people at home unable to get treatment. It's excess deaths at home that the thing that's largely been high for the last two or three years, especially coming out of the pandemic. Mm. But it's not helped by what's happening right now. So you're getting patients in hospital, whether they're getting the right treatment, that might be put at risk. And there's also people at home waiting for treatment. Yeah, It's completely unacceptable. But, you know, I've got every sympathy for the staff. I've got huge admiration for what they're doing. But I don't have much sympathy for the union and the government right now 
because they're displaying a yeah. form of pathetic brinkmanship that has actually been going on for months and months and months. And then we're now in a situation where people's lives are at risk because of that, and that is completely unacceptable. And they say that part of the reason, I mean, the real the reason for this strike is they want a pay rise. But, of course, yeah. they put in all this bleeding heart stuff about we're so concerned about patient safety. You know, there aren't enough doctors, and if we have better working terms, better pay, we'll get more, attract more doctors. Uh, so they say patient safety is, the, is at the heart of this dispute. Well... Uh, they don't seem to care very much about patient safety right now, do they? So during this four-day strike, uh, there will barely be any patient safety. People are going to die because of it. So I don't know why we're supposed to put up with this, frankly, intellectually insulting claptrap about them caring about patient safety. Right now, they're abandoning it for, th for four days. It's, the, it's, called, it's also it's called the most disruptive strike in NHS history. Yes, it's putting people's lives at risk. That's, that's the thing here. You know, we're getting two sides, you know, talking about pay, not getting round the table because of pathetic brinkmanship. Meanwhile, people are having more delays, worried about getting treatments. You know, staff that are still working and in certain areas will be stretched. I mean, I see it on the other end of it, whereby, you know, for instance, there's thousands of patients you can't get into care homes, so they're taking up beds and hospitals because there's nowhere to go. The whole system and infrastructure of the NHS is a breaking point. It, that is not the fault of the staff, but it is the fault of trusts and also the government. And it leads to something like this, where there's a pay demand dispute. This should have been resolved even before there was a dispute. I blame the government for that. If they'd actually been paying better wages in accordance to inflation for a number of years, this wouldn't have happened. But here we are in a situation whereby there's industrial actions, but the very nature of that, because of the sector that it's in, is putting people's lives at risk. And it's completely unacceptable. And both sides are to blame for that optic in itself. Uh, agreed. Now, 